Well, joining us now, Vinita Bali, the former MD of Britannia Industries. Ms. Bali, we just heard Nidhi announcing a, a corporate pledge, uh, uh, you know, people supporting Handmade in India. As someone who's a leader in the corporate world, how can we get corporate India to not just respond to this crisis, but respond with empathy so that our artisans continue to live a life of self-reliance? I think, Vishnu, you put it uh, very well. This is about um, ongoing support. This is about validating what these wonderful artists and craftspeople do. In fact, I think my message to corporates really is that these are the people who are keeping the critical heritage of India alive. So right now, you know, we've heard a couple of corporates pledging. There are two or three things that can be done immediately. One, of course, is, you know, what was the initiation of the hubba is to buy and uh, gift. There are a lot of times where corporates, uh, uh, you know, give you gifts for five years, ten years in the corporate world, etc. A lot of those could be translated into handloom. I think there's another very big thing, and that is that you know we've been talking right now of uh, frontline workers. I would love for corporates to step forward buy these wonderful things created by our artisans and craftspeople and gift them to our frontline workers because that way we are validating both what the artisans and the weavers and the craftspeople have done as well as saying thank you to the wonderful people who are keeping us all safe. Mm -hmm. So I really think that there is, you know, imagination is the only limitation. There are public-private partnerships. We talked earlier about We've got wonderful skills at making these things, but marketing is an issue. I can think of several public-private partnerships where corporates come together, whether it is with the Crafts Council or with bodies of weavers. Um, you know, earlier on in the show, uh, Vishnu, somebody talked about, um, you know, the way um, uh, our tech sector is organized. If we could have a NASCOM equivalent of Handloom, I know there is Crafts Council and so on, but you know that kind of focus and support, there is a lot that can be done on an ongoing and a systematic basis to uh, uh, continue uh, to encourage, support, respect, and validate the critical heritage that these wonderful artisans and craftspeople provide for us. Ms. Mali, the key word here once again is empathy. As a guide and mentor to Habba, how important was it to create an initiative driven by, by empathy? It was, you know, without empathy, nothing moves, uh, actually. If I am not empathetic towards the artisans, if I'm not empathetic towards the cause, if I don't believe that I can be part of the solution, nothing actually will happen. So... You know, without empathy, frankly, nothing moves. It just becomes uh, a tokenism. And we're not looking at tokenism. We're looking at respecting these people for what they do. They do fabulous work. Um, you know, many speakers before me have said that, that this work is unique, it is creative, it is, and they need to be validated, which means they need to be paid for the wonderful work they do, which brings so much joy to all of us. So there's a lot of money in the corporates. There's a lot of money sitting there, you know, whether in terms of normal budgets or CSR budgets, there is imagination and creativity that can be brought to bear for ongoing encouragement and support, whether it is through buying, through marketing, through gifting, through, um, you know, acknowledging. Vinita ji, as you rightly said, that corporates have a lot of money, but after the impact of pandemic and lockdown has uh, had on the economy, how will corporate spending change and will it impact these areas of spending? You know, that's an excellent question you've asked. And uh, what happens is, in a situation like the pandemic, everybody did what was most urgent. So we have to differentiate between the urgent and the important. So the most urgent was making sure people are not going hungry, making sure people who were walking back were given food, etc. So a lot of energy, a lot of money went into those things. Now, this pandemic could be with us for a long time to come. This pandemic changes significantly, um, you know, how things happen, how people work, etc. And therefore, in that world, corporates have to say, what is the ongoing 
systemic, abiding, enduring support that can be provided to our artisans. Um, you know, how can we actually create a context where, like every other industry, this industry is given, if I could use that word, is given incentives. You know, the entire market for handmade products in the world is between 400 and 500 billion dollars. India, with all its unique craftsmanship, is not even 2% of that. So I'm saying make in India is not just about setting up factories. Make in India is also about supporting these wonderful people, 16 million of them. So that's supporting 80 million uh, people, uh, you know, 80 million uh, people in 16 million households. Uh, it is about supporting them for livelihoods, which can go on forever. You know, the other thing I do want to mention is we have to also realize that on average, the government has just brought out its report on the handicraft sector in India 2019-20. Uh, more than two thirds of weavers make less than 5,000 rupees a month. Mm -hmm. And less than 10,000 rupees a month covers about 95%. So industry has to be empathetic towards organizing this in such a way that the person who does this fabulous work is rewarded and remunerated. Forget about rewarded, remunerated with equity and with empathy. बिल्कुल विनीता जी आपने जो अहम बात की कि नास्कॉम के जैसा हमारे हैंडलूम्स और हैंडीक्राफ्ट्स के लिए एक बनना चाहिए तो उससे एक ठोस मजबूती मिलेगी हमारे क्षेत्र को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद विनीता जी